Great. Awesome. Crazy stories. I can tell you crazy stories. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Cool. Okay. Of course. Um, trying to think. Do you guys have any questions or any anything that you think would be like the craziest? Any actors that you want me to tell a crazy story about? <laughs> Shout out a name of it. Spike Spencer? Oh, um. no. Okay. <laughs> My very first experience with Spike Spencer was at a convention, and uh, it was in Round Rock, Texas. Uh, it was an 18 and over convention. Uh, I had a great time, but I've never been to a convention where you had to be 18 years old to go to this convention. While well, Spike was there, I was there. I was about 19, so I was barely old enough to even be there. But everybody there was 18, and you would think that since it's an 18 and over convention, which for you guys, that's legal to drink, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In Texas, it just makes you legal to vote. You can't necessarily drink. You would have thought it would have been a rowdy convention or everybody would be dropping all sorts of F-bombs and language and all of these things because, oh, we're 18, we're adults, we can say what we want. It was the most quiet, relaxed, chill convention ever. It was so strange. And Spike and I were on a panel and Spike's like, guys, this is 18 plus, why is everybody so relaxed? <laughs> this is like boring, what's wrong with you people? And they said, well, there are no kids. We don't have to worry about trying to make all these kids not take our stuff or be annoying. It's, we can just chill. And Spike was like, this is depressing. Because Spike likes to party. <laughs> and then later on the convention, we were doing an autograph signing. And there's a donut shop uh, in Round Rock that gives donuts like this big. And um, somebody found out that I, I had just done something for that anime show with uh, Jay. J. Michael Tatum mm -hmm. and Terry Doty, and I um, shoved a cupcake down Tatum's throat because he said he didn't want one, and I knew he did. Um, <laughs> so I shoved a cupcake down his throat, so everyone's like, oh, Sherry's the cupcake fairy. She loves all things sweet, like donuts and cupcakes, which is true, I do. <laughs> so this person brings me a giant donut. And I was like, that's so nice of you. I, I love this, this is great. And Spike uh, Spencer was like, Asked the guy, he goes, did you lick it first? I was like, what is it? Spike. He was like, it's an 18 plus convention. They can do whatever they want. And so now every time that I see a donut, I'm afraid of it. Because I, I hear oh. Spike's voice in my head being like, did you lick it first? I'm like, oh God, I can't even look at a donut the same way because of Spike. Oh. And Spike knows that. Like, I said, every time I see a donut, I think of you. I just don't tell him it's in like a very questionable way. But I do love Spike. He's like one of my... Uh, He's one of the guys that totally looked out for me as soon as I moved to LA. And when I told him I was coming to Alcon, he was like, I love those guys. You're gonna have an amazing time. Tell him I said hi. And I was like, I will do that. And uh, apparently he um, messaged uh, JP and Will, who are the fantastic organizers who put this together. If you see them, tell them uh, they're awesome. Um, but he messaged them and he was like, so Sherry's coming. I told her it was gonna be amazing. If you guys, if you guys upset her, you're in big trouble. Yeah. I don't know what Spike is gonna do. Like, I've never seen angry Spike. So I don't know what he would do if he just get drunk with people or, I don't know. Go That's my cheese. Spike story. I don't have any like drinking stories with Spike, although I think I've done a panel with him drunk. And I just laughed because he was saying the most hilarious things. I love Vic, he's so funny. I was at a convention once with, uh, it was at Akon, which is a huge convention in Dallas, and Vic is so sweet to his fans. He will sign forever, and these, these fans adore him. He's, he's so lovely. Um, but he was, there was a girl that was waiting in line, and uh, I was finished signing, and our signings overlapped by about 15 minutes, so I'm walking back and I see this girl, and she's like, like hyperventilating, but I could tell like the color was draining from her face to the point that I started getting nervous that she was gonna pass out. And so I stopped and I was like, hi, hi, you have to breathe. And it needs to be like a, like a good deep breath because you are gonna pass out. She was like, I'm gonna meet Vic. And I'm like, see, that's, that's making me really lightheaded. So I know it's not good for you. <laughs> I'm taking real breaths and you're not. So let's do this together. And she was like, this is my first to be Vic, and I'm like, I, I, this I understand, but you've got like 20 minutes left in this line to meet Vic, and if you keep breathing like this, you're not gonna make it. And that's gonna be a horrible experience for everyone. 
And so it became a huge deal, and I was telling Vic about it later, and he thought that I was like, uh, he had misunderstood and thought that I was like, I don't know, trying to upset her, and I was like, no, Vic, I knew that once she got to the front of your line, she was gonna be like, oh, Vic Mignogna, and pass out, and then be like, I missed my one chance to see Vic Mignogna because I passed out because I wasn't breathing. And Vic started laughing, and he goes, it's happened before, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I wanna be the breathing coach for Vic Mignogna's line, just be like, we're gonna get through this together. Deep breaths. So I'm like, you don't want to miss your chance to meet Vic Mignogna. I know how, how lovely it is when Vic Mignogna's like, how are you today? You just go, I mean, I'm feeling so much better now. How do you create this natural glow and sparkle about you? Can you bottle it and sell it? Because I want it. I want to sparkle like Vic Mignogna. It's true. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a crazy Vic Mignogna story. And apparently people pass out all the time. Uh, I recently went to a, um, a few conventions with him last year, and uh, since we, I don't really have any stories about when we're working together, other than that he's just a fantastic actor and he's a great writer. So if he's right, like he wrote for Steinsgate, which was fantastic because he was also playing the main character. Yeah. And since he knew that show so well for both sides. I absolutely knew that the writing was going to make sense and it was going to be very fluid and he had a different voice for all of the characters and it just worked so easily and I feel like that's what made that show so enjoyable, especially for us who worked on it and hopefully for you guys who watched it. Um, but we don't really get to see each other other than that um, if, unless we go to conventions. And so uh, Tatum and I have gone to two or three conventions. I actually saw him last weekend. But I have found that he and I love food that has cheese in it. And we really have bonded over our love of cheese. Like lobster mac and cheese, uh, bacon mac and cheese, fried cheese curd grilled cheese sandwich. Um, and Tatum likes to cry eat, which if you guys did this when he came, he would feel so at home. He eats food and likes to cry like it's the best thing ever and he feels so guilty about eating it. So he'll be eating food and just going, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and like eating the whole time. So we were at a convention in Wisconsin and he's cry eating, eating a grilled cheese sandwich. And the joke is when somebody comes up and asks him a question, you're just supposed to be like, no, 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 everything's great, it's not a problem. Because most people just look at you like, Hi, can I help you? This waiter came up and was like, he came back like two times. He was like, didn't want to invade because he thought this was a serious situation. Even though I'm filming it with an iPhone laughing. So either I'm just a sadistic human being or everything's okay. So the waiter comes up and he goes, I, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to, can I get you anything? Like I've got a milkshake coming, it's on the house. Don't worry about it, are you okay? And Tatum was like, I, you know what, I'm so, and I was like, there's a milkshake coming. The man feels guilty. Don't ruin, don't upset him. And he goes, uh, this, this is just delicious. And he was like, is everything okay? And he goes, I never want to leave your restaurant. Yes, it's delicious. So the guy brought the milkshake and he was like, you, know, you don't have to cry. You, you can stay as, as long as you like. It's, you, there's no need to cry like that, and I told Tatum, I was like, this is your karma. You cannot do this to people anymore. <laughs> so now it's just like, whenever I'm around, he'll cry and eat, and then the people will come up to me, and he's like, she's a horrible date. I'm like, oh my god, what does this mean? So, yeah, he's awesome though. We just, we like to have far too much fun together. Uh, you know when you like rock back on a chair? Um, you shouldn't do that. You should especially not do that when you're wearing headphones and you've twisted them around your leg. Oh. <laughs> I was rocking back and forth and somebody opened the door and was like, hey, Jeremy, and I was like, hey, what? And they, like slammed my head in the thing and then all they said, all I could see was my foot up in the air because it was caught on the headphones, like 
strung up. So that was awkward. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else weird that's happened. I mean, there's the, there's the classic sense. We don't have any of our lines memorized beforehand since it's all cold reading. And we just read really fast. Sometimes my brain gets ahead of how fast my voice can talk. So I'll make up words or end up saying things that have double entendre meanings. And I don't, I don't hear it because I'll be like, oh, well, I know what I'm saying. And the director will play it back and go, listen to what you just said. Oh, guys, you know what I meant. Can we just like let it pass? And they're like, no, it's inappropriate. I was like, you know, I think the fans would know what I was talking about. <laughs> um, so yeah, other than that, there hasn't been any like accidents. I did have um, sort of an accident when iPhones were first coming out and they had the lightsaber app. Everybody was having, we would take like five minute breaks because we get a little um, cabin fever in the booth. We would take five minute lightsaber breaks and everyone would have lightsaber wars in the hallway with all of the other voice actors that were there that day. And I never had an iPhone. I was the last person to get an iPhone. So I would just watch the lightsaber, the lightsaber fights from afar. And then one day I was like, guys, I got my iPhone. So like I walked out when it was time for lightsaber fights and I like started my lightsaber and like no one was there. And I was like, oh. they said, uh, you aren't doing that anymore. It's, it's just not fun anymore. Oh. I was like, what? And so I started like, like, you know, trying to state my case and I was really getting into it and I gestured widely and I like knocked my, my arm into a wall and my iPhone flew all the way across the room and almost busted it on day one. Oh. So that wasn't really an accident in the booth, but it was an accident at the studio. Well, like today with the, the, the brain music, that was weird. Awesome, but weird. <laughs> oh, when we were um, premiering Sailor, uh, premiering the cast of Sailor Moon, the new cast, we had a full day of events at Anime Expo, which there are like 220,000 people at this convention. It's massive. And uh, they wanted to do a huge photo opportunity with all the cosplayers and all of the cast. And so we stood in front of the Sailor Moon like poster and we all just like posed and then they had like a red carpet like like on this runway and we would be back here this red carpet that went across and then they had like these red ropes and they had people just like walk across the red carpet and take pictures for like 20 minutes and they would say like okay guys don't drop your smile so we're standing here like this <laughs> for like 40 30 or 40 minutes and it was really weird. At one point I was like, this is so painful, my cheeks hurt so bad, but I don't wanna ruin this person's picture, so I'm just gonna stand here like this. And I asked a couple of the other girls, I was like, so halfway through that, were you like in a daze where you're like, gosh, that has a really bright light. Man, how did they get that up that high? And we're just like smiling the whole time, like thinking about, I don't even know. And they all said, yes. And then like about 10 minutes into the photo shoot, I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, now I know what a wax figurine feels like. <laughs> and everybody was like, yes, I feel like we belong in a museum. We're not allowed to move. So that was probably the weirdest experience. I felt like I was supposed to be plastic. Like, cause you stand there for a while and you're like, nobody knows that I'm alive. Anybody fight over? Fight over me? No, that'd be weird. <laughs> I did have a, like a, a weird, uh, I did a web series called Throwing Stones and we had this live, um, like this live show where people could call in and ask questions. And my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, was hosting it because he was also a character on the web series. And some guy came in and was like, can I marry Cher me? And John was kind of like, how old are you? And he was like, I'm 14. And John was like, no. <laughs> um, and, and then now we're married, so I guess that was the closest to that. There really was no fighting. I mean, I, I think it would be weird. So we ask then that everyone moves on to that exit as well, please, because we do have the next thing coming in. We've got the cosplay coming up.